We're now on the bottom of Daf Sadi Gimel Amid Aleph. We're studying the sheet of Rebbe. And Rebbe holds that if you didn't bring either the carbon Pesach Rishon or the carbon Pesach Sheni, both cases are the case of a Mez Yechai Kareis. And Rebbe derives the Chiv Kareis for non fulfillment of Pesach Sheni from the end of the Pesach that says, it says, um, Kilo Hikriv Bimoado. And then it says, Cheto Yisa. So the Gemara says, We may here on the very bottom. Of Daft Tzadi Gimel Amid Aleph, turning to Daft Tzadi Gimel Amid Beis. How do we know the Cheto Yisa Kares? Who? What's the source for Rebbe's conclusion that the phrase Cheto Yisa, he will be carrying the burden of the penalty of Kares? So the Gemara explains, Kasava Rebbe holds. Now here we're going to have an equation between Megadev and Mevarech Hashem. Megadev, there's a whole parsha of Megadev. Which is in Bamidbar Tesvav. And Megadev, whatever it is, we don't know yet what Megadev is, but it says, Es Hashem Hu Megadev, and Nichusai Nefeshahi, make me care of Amor. So it means that the Torah specifies that a Megadev is Chayav Kars. Keep that in mind. Who is the Megadev? There's Rebbe, um, my opinion is, Hainu Mivar Chas Hashem, someone who curses Hashem God, and he's Chayav Kars. Now, let's open up the parsha of Mivarech Hashem. Vayikra Chav Dalet, Uksiv B'Mivarech Hashem. It says, each, each, ki yikalel alohom, v'nasa chet o. Ah, we have v'nasa chet o. And we know that v'nasa chet o in Mivarech Hashem, which is Makala, is a chiv karis. And we know that from, and, and now, where do we get the chiv karis in Mivarech Hashem? That we know from, Megadev, because Rebbe holds that Megadev is Mavarach Hashem. And now we have a Gzeir Shava of Cheto Cheto Yisa, Mala Halan, just like in the case of Mavarach Hashem, is Karis Yisrael of Karis, because it says they have a Nechrisa in Megadev. And Afka Nami, here too, with the same exact phrase is used. Again, keep in mind that the words Venasachet O are. Not in the parasha of Megadi, but in the parasha of Mavarach Sachem, but Rebbe identifies the two as, as the same. His Afkan Nami here in Pesach Sheni too is when it says Cheto Yisod, the Chet means that he's Chayav Kores. Rabbi Nosan Sovar, according to Rabbi Nosan, we're going to take the two parts of the Pesach, the Rach and the Sefer, we're going to combine them together with the word Ki. In other words, the beginning of the Pesach says, the end of the Pasuk says, and the key is interpreted as a reason that the Torah is giving to why it's Chayv Kareitz in the case of Chadala Sosa Pesach. Rabbi Nosan Sov, Chadala Sosa Pesach, and Nichrosa Nefesha Hime Ameho, Ki Karman Hashem Lo Hikrib Bimodo, the high key. Lashon Dahahu, Daha means Shehare. And the Torah is now with the key giving us an explanation, a tam, as to why it says that he's Chayav Kareis. Vahoki Kamar Achmona, he has you read the Pesach, Chadala, Sosa Pesach, and Nechrisa. If he didn't do Pesach, he would be amazed. He's Chayav Kareis. And why? Shehare, Karban Hashem lo Hikri Bimoado, Birishon. And it's all referring to Rishon. And therefore, according to Rabbi Nasan, there is no source for a chi of kares on Pesach Sheni. It just doesn't exist. Now, it's interesting that the word ki is being interpreted here as shehare. And in truth, the Gemara Rosh Hashanah says that there are four different ways of interpreting the word ki in biblical, in biblical Hebrew. One of them is hare, shehare. But now the Gemara asks the following question. Well, if you're telling me that for Pesach Sheni, there's no Chiv Kares, then what is the Torah adding here at the end of the Pesach? It says, Chet O Yisa. I mean, according to Rebbe, that, that's coming to Mechadish, that you have Kares for Pesach Sheni. But according to Rebbe Nosson, you're not Chiv Kares for Pesach Sheni. So what's for Chet O Yisa? Hi, Chet O Yisa, my Ovid Lei. Kosovar, he holds Megadev Lav Hainu Mevarch Hashem. Megadev is someone who is, uh, Rashi says he's, uh, 
mizamer u mishorer l'avodet zorah, some sort of avodet zorah worship. And that's not mevarach sachem. Mevarach sachem is mekaleh. The gomar hai cheto de hosam may hai cheto de hoch. Since they're two different entities, one is going to teach the other. Meaning that if in the case of mevarach sachem, the Torah spells out the nasachet o, and in the case of Magadif, the Torah spe- uh, spells out the nichrasad nefesh. And now Chet O is going to teach us that when it says in Mevarach Hashem, we have Chet O, and it's coming to tell you that Mevarach is, is Chayev, Chayev Kores. The Gomer Hai Chet O Dehosam, May Hai Chet O Dehocha. Here, in the case of someone who bemazed it, doesn't bring his carbon pesky, it's Chayev Kores, and it's the Torah used the term Chet O Yisa, is Af Hosam there too in the case of Mavarach Sashem, where it says, Venosal Chet O, he's Chayev Kareis. Now we move on to the third sheet in the Tanoim, Rabbi Hananya Ben Akavya Sovar. He darshan the Possum Vichadal Asosa Pesach Vinichrisa. If he did not bring the Korban Pesach reach on, Vimezid, he's Chayev Kareis. And now the Torah is saying, E. E means Im. The Torah is now adding a condition to that Chayev Kareis. E, Korban Hashem, Lo Hikri Bimodo. Shani, he agrees with Rebbe at the end of the Pasuk is addressing Shani, but he disagrees with Rebbe as setting up a new entity independent of Pesach Rishon, but rather it's being Machlin, it's completing Pesach Rishon and telling you under what circumstances will you incur Chiv Kares for the Mazid of not bringing Pesach Rishon if you were Mazid on Pesach Shani. Karban Hashem Lo Hikri Bimoado, referring to Pesach Shani. The Gemara now asks, "V'hai cheto yisa my ovidle." If the Torah is telling you that if you violate Pesach Sheni, you chayiv kares for Pesach Rishon, and kares Pesach Rishon is spelled out, why the Torah had to add in Pesach Sheni v'cheto yisa? And the Gemara answers, "Kid Amar," exactly the way Rabbi Nosson learned from cheto yisa to teach you. That Mavarach Hashem is Chayiv Kares. Bilkoch. Now the Gemara gives us a summary of these three shitos. Hazid Bazel Bazer. If he was Mazid, both in Karmish and Parachedi, is the Rakol Chayiv Kares. Everybody agrees Chayiv Kares. Shogak Bazel Bazer. Everybody agrees he's not Chayiv Kares. There's no reason to be Chayiv Kares. He was Shogging on both. Is the Rakol Pot. Hazid Barishon Veshogak Besheni. The first issue on the table that is going to be a matter of controversy is the case where it was with Mezid Barisham, but he was Shogig Bashani. Lerebiul Rabbi Nasa Mechaive. He's Chai of Kharis, according to both Rebbe and Rabbi Nasa. And Rabbi Hanani ben Akavi, your potter. Rabbi Hanani ben Akavi, if you remember, postulated that you're only Chai of Kharis if you violated both Pesach Rishon and Pesach Shani. Now we have another scenario in which we have a debate here. Shogag Barishon Vehezi Bicheni. He was a Shogay. He couldn't be Chayev Kares for Pesach Rishon. He was a Shogay. But with regard to Pesach Cheni, he deliberately decided he's not bringing the Karban. It's the Rebbe Chayev. Rebbe says that, as we said before, Pesach Cheni now takes over the position of Pesach Rishon. And forget about Pesach Rishon. Now we'll focus all our attention on Pesach Cheni. He was amazing on Pesach Cheni. He's Chayev Kares. Well, the Rabbi Nosson and Rabbi Hanani ben Akavi here, these two Tanoim agree with each other, Potter, because they hold that there's no Chiv Kars except for Pesach Rishon, according to Rabbi Hanani, Pesach Rishon plus Pesach Sheni, according to Rabbi Nosson, Pesach Rishon as an independent entity. And therefore, if he was Shogig in Pesach Rishon, and according to both Rabbi Nosson and Rabbi Hanani ben Akavi, even though he was Mazen on Pesach Sheni, he is Potter from Kars. And now we're up to the Mishnah here. On Daf, Sadi Gimel, Ahmed Base. Now you may remember that back on Daf Sadi Bays, we discussed the case of someone who's Bederech Rechoka, and he's Potter from bringing the Korban Pesach on the 14th of Nisan, and therefore he will be pushed off to the 14th of Iyar, Pesach Shein. 
what is considered derech rechoka? How do you measure derech rechoka and define it? And we begin with Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva holds min in vilachutz from a city outside Yerushalayim that's close to Yerushalayim called Modi'in. I doubt that's where Modi'in is today, by the way. This is much closer to Yerushalayim. And umidasa l'chol ruach. You know, this reminds me of Tchumim, if you remember. You know, apayim ama in any direction. So you put a point in the middle and you draw a, a circle, you know, with a radius of uh, alpayim ama here. We're drawing a circle with the radius of the distance, which we haven't defined yet, between Modian and Yerushalayim. Anything in on that circle or beyond is Pesach Shedi, Zachad, Pesach Richon, is Bederech Rechok. Divrei Rabbi Akif. Rabbi Eliezer Omer, even if he's standing me, Skupas Ha'azora Velachutz. What's his Skupas Ha'azora? He quotes the Oroch, and the Oroch says it means the Miftan. Miftan is the threshold. Standing, mind you, at the threshold of the Azorah. He hasn't yet entered into the Azorah, and it's Erev Pesach. He's potter from Pesach Rishon. He is Bederech Rechok. He's at that point, he is Meskupa uh, Vela. If I get a chance, maybe I'll read to you something from my father's Sefer about this Machlok. In any event, he says, Meskupas has Zor Velachutz. And he's not, he, he's no further than you, he's in your I mean, he's no further than the Azara, and he's considered the Derech Amar lay according to one gives Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi says, I have a raya, a proof to support Rabbi Eliezer. And that's, ba- you know, we have a tradition of not only reading the osios of the Torah, but also there are certain nekudos that are on top of letters in the Torah. That's also part of the Mesora from Moshe Rabbeinu. And the word rechoka in in the Pasuk, Rechoka, has an akud on top of the He, the last letter of the word Rechoka. The Fichach Nakud Al He, there's a Nakuda dot, according to our tradition, on top of the letter He of the word Rechoka. And I'll just read to you Rashi says, Kol the Kudacha Mealteva Shabbatora Bala Mait. So the Nakuda is a mute. And in the Brisa in Masechta Sofrim, there's a list of 10 places where there are Nakudas in the Torah on top of a word or on top of part of a word. And this actually was, dates back to the time of Ezra. Now, what does the Nakuda on top of the Hay of Rechoka as a Mir teach me? Lomar, Lomit Nesha Rechok Vada. You know, it's not because he's Mamich Rachok from Yerushalayim. He's not far from Yerushalayim. He's in Yerushalayim. Ella meiskupas hazara vilachutz. He's called b'derek rechoka because he is on the threshold of, but not yet entered into the azara. Now the Yushalmi quotes a machlok shin Rebbe and Rabbanon regarding this Rabbi Yossi. What raya was Rabbi Yossi bringing from the Nakuda on top of the letter He in Rechoka? And Rebbe holds that Rabbi Yossi brought a raya from the Nakuda on top of the He because even one Nakuda on top of one single letter is coming lakar eskola teve mimash ma'utza to completely undermine the simple reading of the word. The Rabbanon have a, have a different approach to Rabbi Yossi. And they hold local nekuda ba l'kshana satev l'gamre, mimash pu'usa ki lo nikhtava, ele rak hashera osios mea nekudos rabos, mea osios she'enom nekudos. So according to the Shit l'chachamim, you have to look at the letters and see if the majority of the letters have dots on them, or only the minority of the letter Letters of that word have dots on it. And the, the uh, Medjish brings a case 
of when the Malachim came to Avram in Parshas Vayer, it says, Vayomer lo sara ishtecha. And there are nakudos on every single letter of the word elov. It says vayomru elov, with the exception of the lamet. The lamet doesn't have an akuda. And the measure says that in such a case, yesh l'shanos is a table gamri b'mashma uso. We change the whole meaning of of the word because most of the letters of that word have nakudos the on them. Ah, kasher ha'osios eno chen nekudos rabos me anekudos. So you only have, let's say, in our case, one letter that has a dot on top. Lo bo anekudos l'shanos es kol atei mashmu. So el yesh l'salik es ha'osios shanekudos alehen v'lijos atei v'biladeha. And since there's a nekudos on one letter on the letter hey in the word rechoka. It's as if we interpret the word as rachok without the hey. It's as if we interpret the word as rachok means the person is far away, but the derech itself is not rachok. So we don't read it as derech rachok, but derech and rachok. He himself is rachok. And that means afilu mi eskupas hazara. Now we're up to the Gemara. Now, in the Mishnah, we learned to Rabbi Akiva that if a person is far away from Yushalayim, as far as Modi'in or any of Merchak of that distance, then he's called the Derech and he's part of the Pesach Richa. Now, we have to keep in mind as we go through the Sugya now that where is he at what time? And the answer is he's in Modi'in at Chatzos, midday on the 14th of Nisan, which means that if he walked or took a, a normal donkey ride from Modi'in to Yushalayim, he would get there at night. That's how far he is from the Azara, where he has to bring the carbon Pesach. So he won't get there on time for the Akrovas carbon Pesach. And again, the first moment of Kravas Karbesa is Chatzos, midday on the 14th. Omar, Ula, how far is Modi'in to Yushalayim? Min Modi'in to Yushalayim, Chamicha Sar Milin Hava. It's a distance of 15 Milin. And so according to Ula, Min Modi'in to Yushalayim, it means minamodin le azara. Okay, that's fine. And we're going to talk about a tour of derech rechoka because if he's standing in modin, he's not able to reach Yerushalayim. That's fifteen milin by the time the zman hashchita ends, meaning with shkia sacham. Savarle. Ki ha di Omar Rabba Babrachan of Rabbi Yochanan. Saula accepts this principle in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. Kama Mahalich Adam Biyom, your average person on an average day, let's say it's 12 hours daylight, 12 hours nightfall, he leaves on his trek at Alosa Shachar and he's walking constantly, continuously until the entire day. Asara Parsios. A normal person, if he starts his walk at Alosa Shachar, by the time it's Seisakokhov, he would have walked 10 Parsios, which is 40 mil. Each Parsa is one, each Parsa is four mil. Okay, but now Rabbi Yochanan is going to break down the walk into three different parts. So you truncate the day both on the top and on the bottom. The beginning of the day is five milin. That's from Alos HaShachar until Anet. The end of the day is truncated from Shkia until Seis. And in both cases, those periods of time, 
or the time it takes them to walk five mil. So if you subtract five from five from the original 40 mil, you're left with 30 mil. Is Pashu Bay Talson, what you're left with is 30 mil. Now we take we split that 30 mil into two halves, two equal halves. And what you have is 15 mil starting from Hanitzachama until Chatzosayom, and another 15 mil starting with Chatzosayom until Shkias Hachama. So now we see that Ula holds that from Chatzosayom until Shkias Hachama, which is the time for Shkitas HaPesach, is this man hiluch of Chamesha Sarmil. It works beautifully according to Rabbi Yochanan's calculations. So therefore, if somebody at Chatzos Hayom is outside of Yushalayim, the distance of Modin to Yushalayim, that means that he is 15 mil away from Yerushalayim. 15 mil. Because we're talking from the earliest time of bringing the Karm Pesach, which is Chatzos, until the latest time for bringing the Karm Pesach, which is Shkia Sachama, from Chatzos to Shkia, it's 15 mil. As we discussed earlier, it's from Hanait until Chatzos is 15 mil, and from Chatzos until Shkia is 15 mil. The Gemara says that Ulitame, this is very consistent with Ula's statement, the Yomar Ula Eza Hu Derkachok, Kolcha Eno Yochal Likanes Bechashkita, that if he left his point of location and departed at Chatzos, he would not be able to make the Karm Pesach, make it on time in the Azorah, show up on time before the last moment of Shechita Pesach, meaning he's more than 15 mil from Yerushalayim. Omar Mar, let's go back to Rabbi Yochanan, Me'alos HaShacha, Ad HaNetzachamo, Chameshes Mil, Minolan. I think Minolan means, can you find an Asmachta in the Tanakh that would give us this concept of five meal from Alosa Shachar until, until Hanates. Now we go back to the Chumash and we're talking about the story of Lot and the Malochim come because they remember Avram, the uncle, and they saved the nephew. And Lot is told by the Malochim at the time of the destruction of stone so where is Lot? He's in stone. And that's at the moment of Alos HaShachar. Because it says, Ukmo HaShachar Ola. Ola means Alos HaShachar. Now, where is Lot going to run to? He's going to run to a city that's called Tsoar. Uksiv, and the Torah says, Oretz for Lot bought Sara. So Lot departed from Stone at Alosa Shachar and he landed in Soar at Shkia Sacham. Hashemesh Yotza. He writes here that Bizman Yitzias Hashemesh Leheyaros Ba'oretz Shehi Shas HaNetzacham Bo Lot Litzoar. Just one second, Kwan Shachar Ola. Oh, so this is interesting. When Lot departed from Stone. It was Alos HaShachar, as it says, Ukmo HaShachar Ola. And at what point did Lot arrive in Soar, where you saved, spared from the destruction of stone? That's when Hashem Yotz Ala Oretz. Hashem Yotz, if I said Shkia, cross that out, I don't know. But Hashem Yotz Ala Oretz means Hanita Ham. That's when he arrived in Soar. So if you want to know the distance from of of you want to derive the distance of Hamichas Milin from Alosa Shaka Tanates, 
which we saw in Rav Yochanan, derived from this because I was personally in stone and I walked to Soar and it took me five million. So from Alosa Shaka Tanate is five million. Gufa, Omar Ulezi, Derek Kokalasher, Yocholi Kanes. Now we see the dissenting opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. Although, according to Ula, everything depends on Shashchita, so that when Rabbi Akiva spoke about Modi'in as Derech Rechoka, he meant that from Modi'in, the Jewish line would take you the time from Chatzos until Shkia, when the end of the Shkita of Korban Pesach. Rabbi Yehuda, Omar, Kol Sheni Yochali Kanes Be Shashachila. We're talking about the 15th. In other words, if he will depart at on the 14th, will he be able to arrive before the end of the night of the 15th, which is the last moment for Achilas of Pesach in Yerushalayim? In other words, whereas Ula puts all his eggs in the basket of Chita. Rabbi Yehuda puts all his bag, bag, eggs in the basket of Achila. Now, it's interesting because, as the Gemara is going to point out, we had already a machlokes between Ula and Rabbi Yehuda on a different issue. This was back on Daft Sadi, the issue of a Tmei Sheretz. And the question is whether we can bring the carbon on behalf of a Tmei Sheretz. Right? He needs Harif Shemesh, so he can't bring the carbon himself. But can he send the Shliach and appoint someone as his representative to bring the carbon on his behalf? Ula said he can send it with somebody else. And Rabbi Yudha says, no, he cannot. So now the Gemara is going to take that Machlokas and bring it back to this Machlokas about what is uh, meaning point to Rabbi Akiva, me modin li 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 Yerushalayim, and the Gemara is going to point out that we have a double contradiction. Amalei Rabbi Ula lidi doch kasha, Ula Rabbi Yehuda kasha. Both of you are crossing in the wrong direction here with regard to the relationship between these two issues. Lidi doch kasha. I'm going to ask you a kasha, Ula. The Amrit, you tell me that Derek Chokas culture ain't a yocheli konis. Bishas shchita. In other words, the Torah passes you from the karma because you won't be able to make it back to Yushalayim before Shkia Sacham. And you won't be able to be there for the time of the shchita, but made sheretz. The Eno Yochali Konis Bishas shchita, the karma choked him with Zorkin out sheretz. Your opinion, Ula, is that even though he won't be able to be there, Shas shchita, but he'll be there with Hasachil because all he needs is Harry Shemesh, we're going to be marking the karma for him. So we see very clearly that your opinion is that the Torah doesn't part to you from Korban Pesach just because, just because you won't be there b'shashchita, as long as you be there b'shashachila, therefore shochtin and zorkin on behalf of a tmei mess, of a tmei sheretz. Now, the v'chein Rabbi Yehuda Kasher, Rabbi Yehuda is also involved in a contradiction to the Omar, he holds it, what's there, chokot chel yochel ikonis b'shashachila, all we need is that he should be in Yerushalayim, which means the night of the 15th. That's his mind of Achilles of Pesach. In other words, all we need is Roy Lachilas of Pesach. That's Rabbi Yehuda Shita. And then he's Chayav in Shita, in, in, in Karma. Somebody else will bring the Karma on, on his bear. For Tmei Mes, the Yochel Ikonis Peshas Achila, right? He needs Herif Shemesh. So by the time it's the night of the 15th, he will be able to eat from the carbon pesach. And yet you have you to say ain't chokin, ain't zorkin al tmei met al tmei sheretz. Why not? If according to you the criterion is and the determination is all dependent upon shas achila, then the tmei sheretz will be included in carbon pesach shas achila. Why do you exclude him? Amalei. So Ula responds to Rabbi. Lo le didi kasha, lo le Rabbi Yudu kasha. This is a very nice piece of Gemara. It's too bad it comes at the end of the uh, of the daf because I would have rather started fresh with this Gemara. Very nice Gemara. Uh, not that the Gemara needs my uh, approval, but this is a very nice Gemara. Lididilo kasha. 
you don't you don't have any inconsistency in my in my sheet that says Ula Derech Rechoka Litar Vein Derech Rechoka Litame. These are two different dinim, Derech Rechoka, and a case of Itame, who's also in a sense you can use the term Derech Rechoka, but it's fundamentally different because the tour of Derech Rechoka the Torah says addressing someone who's tahar and the what inhibits him and prevents him from bringing the carbon pesach because it's, he's bederek rechoka so let's read the pasuk the pasuk says or each asheru tahar u bederek lo hoy vechadal lasso sab pesach the emphasis is on lasso sab pesach and therefore ula claims is he going to be around shashchita if he's far away he won't be back for shashchita that's asia sab pesach He's part of it. But as far as the tour of Adam Tommy is concerned, he, that tour of Derech Rechoka depends upon not Shashchita, but, but, but on Shashachila. Why? Because the Torah says, with regard to a Tommy, Tommy La Nefesh, which is a reference to Tumas Mess. And it's p- particularly focused on Tumas Mes Tome Linefesh, we contract Tuma by contact with the corpse, to tell you that even though he has a Tuma Rucha, he's got a full seven days. And that's why he's excluded from the carbon Pesach. But the Torah didn't give you a generic term of called Tome, because in fact, a Tome Lusheretz, we would bring the carbon on his behalf. And therefore, you see clearly that as long as there's no Ikuv Mitzad Achila is concerned, then we can be Shochet and Zorek al Tomei Sheretz. So that's the Shita of Ula. So again, just to get the lumbers, Ula is saying Tzvei Dinim. There are two different Dinim. We shouldn't equate them. If you're talking about Derech Rechoka, the Torah says Lasos, Chodol Lasos. And that means Shas Shchita. But if you're talking about a, a case of someone who is Tomei, then the Torah went out of its way to say Tomei Lenefesh. Whereas in the case of Tomei Sheretz, Vival, since he can eat the carbon Pesach after Erev Shemesh on the night of the 15th, then we can bring a carbon on his behalf. And here we turn to Daf, Sadi Dalad Omenal. Rabbi Yehuda Lokasha, Rabbi Yehuda also has its Vedinim, even though he holds that Derek Rechok depends upon Chasachila, but Tmei Sheretz, we're not going to bring a carbon on behalf of Tmei Sheretz. Why? Rachmana Dachye, the Torah excluded him from the carbon Pesach. Even though b'shas hachila at night he will be roy, you have to have seven shemes. The siv ish ish ki yeh tomei l'nefesh. The Torah doesn't say exactly what day of his tumor he's on. The Torah gives you the term tomei nefesh. Okay, he needs seven days for taro. But milo askinen, if the Torah doesn't qualify, and it should include even the case of Chal Shvichalo Leo Sperev Pesach. They, all the seven days have passed, and he's now on the seventh day, which means that tonight, it's the 14th of Nisa, tonight on the 15th, he will be Tahar. Because even this scenario of day seven of Atomic Mess on the 14th is also included in the parsha that says, we pack, it says we're packing to Pesach Shein. So we see clearly, says Rabbi Yehuda, that there are two different dinah. In the case of Tmei Sheretz, the Torah rejected him, even though at night he could eat the basket. And that we learned from Tommy Mess in the case of day seven. But as far as Derech Rechok is concerned, that depends upon Shas Achilo, And if he's not for... Now, I just want to end the year by telling you that Tosis here raises a big problem. Because both Ula and Rabbi Yehuda are interpreting Rabbi Akiva's Mimodiyin is their Chachok. So how far is it from Modiyin to Yushalayim? Is it the amount of time that you can do in, 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 a, in half a day, right? which we said was 15, uh, 15 milin from uh, Chatzos until Shkir? Or is it twice that amount? So why, don't, why doesn't somebody just get on a bus, you know, travel to Modiyin, Take a long walk to Yerushalayim and see how long it takes. I mean, what kind of machlokas is there here between Ula and Rabbi Yehuda within the framework of Rabbi, of, of Rabbi Akiva? That, that's Tosus's cash. Tosus says that we cannot know because back in the time of Rabbi Akiva, things were different, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera.
So we're both saying this is where we're going to stop for today. Here on the top of Daf Tzadi Dalin Amid Aleph, and we're up to line five, which is Tanra Banan.